Whew. All right, guys, this is your girl, Miss Beth, back in the house with another video. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome, welcome back to the channel. Today is Thursday. Yeah, beautiful Thursday. It's not so hot today. I was just doing my little stuff. So, I do the five hours of Jamaican revival music, guys. And that is what I use to do my sweating, to do my working out. Uh, to do my working out. I'm so, so I was just here, just moving, 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 moving. <laughs> moving. The good thing in Jamaica, I like with Jamaica, you're not hungry a lot. <laughs> you're not hungry a lot. So, you know, if you can be careful of what you're eating, sometimes you get carried away because there's so much nice stuff to eat. But I try to stick with my jelly coconut. I try to stick with this. And um, sometimes when I drink a cup, like this one had a lot of good water in it. So when I drink it, I'm not hungry. So I drink that and I just am dancing, dancing. I, I don't want to do this because then sometimes I get some good views on the videos, but because I'm including the, the, the music I dance to in the video, then I cannot monetize it because their music, their, their music is copyrighted. And so I don't get a strike for it. So they're not say I'm not, they're not saying I'm using their, their material to, as my own. But what they're saying is that people are collecting money for their stuff and therefore I cannot collect for it as well. Some of them will allow you to share whatever. I don't make much on YouTube too. <laughs> but um, just sometimes to leave things alone, just leave it alone. And, um, you know, I do my dancing and my movement um, off the camera. So as soon as I start walking, it's, it's hilly up here. As soon as I start walking, I'm hoping to take you guys on the journeys with me. Um, don't hold your breath because I walk out and I go out and around and up and come back. <laughs> I don't go too far, but in, in, in time. But today, guys, I just want to say thank you to all of you who have been supporting. Welcome to all the new people. Please know that you are absolutely appreciated. And for my old people who have been with me, my older, oh my God, your family, your family, your soul family. And so I appreciate all of you who have been with me, have gone but come back from time to time. I absolutely appreciate you. I appreciate those of you who have been making the channel grow. Um, we have gained so many new subscribers. One of the things that I need to share with you guys before today, I talk about how can we can how can we improve drivers' behaviors in Jamaica. Um, is that when you're trying to grow your channel, one of the things that I saw on a on a on a on, a, on another page public right can share it um i don't know i'd have to drop the link in one of the videos some don't know if trending you watch this then drop the link for me of sonia forgot her name her last name she's from africa and she gave some advice as to how to grow your channel and we have been trying it guys it, it means that you're taking you're creating little video clips um and you're using the songs that have been those p powerful songs that have made millions of had have millions of views so you use them to help to build your your shorts but you have to do the shorts often you have to go and if you notice i've been a lot of shorts have been popping up on my channel now and that is what helps to bring in subscribers it really works. Um, I saw people on, on, on her channel that followed what she said and 
gained their thousand subscribers very quickly in a short time and after you you work with it for a certain time remember you don't just want subscribers you need to have watch hours so you shouldn't be just doing the shorts doing the shorts you still need to be doing your long videos because your long videos are where you will get the ads placed on those long videos those ads or no the ads is some money but your long videos will help you to watch hours that's what i was going to say your long videos helps with the watch hours you go you do your live some people have seen them set up their live for the whole night having the camera pointing to a picture or to a scene or to mute whatever it is but have it set up so that the hours are are raking in we cannot just sit down and think that it's one way or one size that's going to fit everything, guys. You have to, you know, go to other people's channels, watch them, support them, like their videos, look at the information they're sharing. We can't just sit down and think that we drop a video and all of a sudden you're going to get monetized on YouTube to get a little check. This month, like, for the first, first time, apart from if I did a video where I got some... Um, get funds like I do videos of my son or my daughter or whoever will 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 put up will put money on, and um, and 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 they YouTube takes out six forty percent of that. Whatever you make on YouTube, they take forty percent. Memberships, whatever it is, they take forty percent. You get sixty. And, um, but it's the first time I'm looking at my channel, looking at the revenue, just like that, boom, 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 you know, made so much. It's not a lot of money, but made as much as it has made. Sometimes it takes two months. My threshold is a hundred dollars. So every hundred, every time I get to a hundred dollars, they will send out a check, a hundred or more dollars, right? It has to get to a hundred. You're not going to get a check if it's $80 or 90. It has to make a hundred or more. And so, um, it usually takes a, a, you know, but this, this, just in, this is September, like, it really has been taking off. So thanks to all of you who have been sharing the videos, who have been liking the videos, it counts. You know, they are pushing up my videos now, they're really moving it around. I see people come and say, this came up in my feed. <laughs> and I love it, I really appreciate that. I have one person to respond to who, you know, some of you have some beautiful um, shares, you know, you're telling me your experiences and it, it really encourages. So please continue to support Miss Bev and so we can continue to grow. If you have any topics you want me to talk on, then please let me know in your comments because I read all the comments and um, so I can connect to my experiences or I can talk to people who have had the experience but I will do my due diligence as best as I can to bring back the information. I know one person asked about the develop the different developments. There are so many. I did reach out to a real estate person to send me like give me an, an idea of a list of um developments that he never did. So I'm going to have to do it myself and kind of just find them. I know so far one of the best ones is Richmond Hill. Um, Dr. Elise Clark, he um, referring to that one and um, I have looked at it and it has a lot of amenities there. They have restaurant, they have a shopping area there. That one is a, is a good one. Haven't seen it in person, we need to go up and, and check it out, but that one, um, then I heard that Draxall is, is, is also a nice one. I don't know I've been there. Just understand that people, like, it's a lot of developments. The one thing is that you've got to look for the infrastructure that is in place. Did they add anything? Did they put anything in place to make sure that water supply is adequate and, and things like those? Because that's one of the problems a lot of people face when they come and... You know they don't have even though i'm saying you have to remember you're coming to jamaica there's just so much that is going to be done it's not going to have any grand infrastructure like they have 
in developed countries that have the land space, have the equipment, and all of that to make it happen. So today I'm going to talk about how, how can we improve driver's behaviors in Jamaica. Listen, I came home, I'm not a road person, so I've always said, whether I'm in Connecticut or here in Jamaica, I'm not a street person. When I go out to work, I go out to work, I come home and I'm good. And that is why I like a nice home and I'm not talking about material things or whatever, but a nice, a nice, clean, cozy space that has just enough of what I need. And so when I walk in to my home, or when I leave, when work is done, I am happy to go home. I'm always happy to, to just get home because it's, it's, it's what I, it's, it's, it has what I need there. And so I'm here, and again, I'm in a space where I'm happy to be home. And so I'm not somebody to get up, oh, today I have to be down in Ocho Rios. Oh, tomorrow, today I have to be this place and that place. Oh, I have to go into Kingston. If I don't have to, believe me, I'll never even get to Kingston. Because I'm not a road person. I'm not somebody who, come on, we have to go here, we have to go there. I'm good. But from what, from the times I've been on the road, just like coming from Montego Bay and getting to the destination, um, you know, it, it, it amazes me. And I've always said it from, I came back, I remember years ago when we used to go to Kingston from Trelawney. And when you get to, you're going through St. Anne's and you get to like Fern Gully and those little, and we get up to the, the, the mountains there, Mount Rasa and Mount Diablo, Mount Rasa. It really used to, you know, but then people used to have to take time to navigate. As it got closer in the late 80s, I left 83, as it got like 82, 83, then people were navigating faster they were getting a little too fast for comfort on the roads and mind you all the corners all the you know the the the, the, the uh, they were getting a little too fast younger people they just didn't have the patience insurance was high still high licensing the vehicles pff, ridiculous and getting the plates they need to carry people um, it cost so much that they couldn't be satisfied uh, uh, with what they were making in a day to pay those bills. Some people were driving for other people. And when they look at the funds, you hear them say, by the time they run one trip, they have to pay the owner X amount. By the time they cannot do one trip a day and to make something for, for themselves and their family. So people started just doing the road and sometimes carelessness happened, you know, um, because they were trying not to overdo it in order for them to make bread for themselves. Um, when I came back in 19, I remember in, in the 80s there, they were digging down um, places in St. Catherine there, right? And they were creating new ways to get into into Kingston because when you get to um, Flatbridge that was always a problem when it rains and that river overflows it's, it's banks and you know even without that the little bridge I never like to go over it because boy just seem like you're going to drop off in the water over there but you keep your head straight just look ahead and they navigate to you keep going. So I still see that they use that bridge, but they have they have highways to go through and get you into Kingston. And um, and so things have really changed a lot, a lot, a lot. Now the people are still using those roads, those I call them country roads, the donkey lanes, um, smaller spaces to navigate. Or no, no lights, nothing has changed, two lanes, and so you keep going. 
But when the highways came into play, guys, what has happened, what I've noticed, is that a lot of people do not understand the road codes. A lot of people, they have license and it, it has become a problem. So many lives have been lost on these highways and they're lost because, first, I always said it, you cannot build these new highways you're not educating people about the new signs that go up <clears throat> about like sometimes you have the markings in the road a lot of people don't know what they're for i've seen more than once i see um fire reed fire reed drives around jamaica mostly in the country areas and fire reed shows i remembered when fire reed did duncan's was driving in duncan's and you could clearly see in the road the markings, the lines, right? It means that it doesn't mean to overtake somebody. The lines in the road has a special code for that. Sometimes they're preparing for people who are going to turn off the highway to turn and cross and, and, and cross another lane to go into where they need to go. So they cut the lines and they fix the thing to show. Sometimes the lines are there and then the, it's saying that the road is going to end. That piece of this, the road section is going to end. People who do not understand it, keep, they just keep going. The road ends on them and now they end up into somebody's vehicle, killing people, maiming people. You know, it, it, it is ridiculous. So one of the things that um, will help to improve driver's behavior in Jamaica, first and foremost, I say, is education. Safe driving practices, defensive driving, and understanding road codes and signs will make a huge difference. Not only for new drivers, but all drivers. All drivers. Stop, people have to stop selling license to people who cannot understand the road signs. A lot of things that in Jamaica is this money under the table where people are able to purchase things that they cannot manage but they get access to it because somebody in the department who should be protecting and should be satisfied with what they make as a salary feels that nope I need to make 500,000 a month when my salary only pays 150,000 so you find these gullible people, these people, these, these weak people who, they don't care who they sell license to. And these people are buying these licenses and cannot even read well enough to understand the signs on the road. And so we find that time and time again, there are people who can keep the car straight, but they cannot read a darn thing out there. So... In order for us to have safe driving practices in Jamaica, we have to remember that these are some of the things. A lot of times you're driving, remember, defensive driving means that you're not driving just for yourself, you're driving for those others who, you know, I remembered a close person, he's driving and I think he exited the highway and somebody else came off and was like really pushing and instead of him just moving out the way let the person go on him decide to hold the road and end up in an accident we don't need to hold the road guys you will see somebody who is 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 not adhering to road um to the laws of the road don't sit there and toe to toe with them one of the things in life I always say to us, never toe to toe with anybody. Don't, don't bait them. Don't bet them. You see an idiot coming, just move out. It's not going to hurt you to just move over and let them go. Let them go. Let them go. You have to understand that a lot of people are going through things as well. They're going through whatever and they don't care who they take it out on. So when you're out there driving, be defensive. Understand that you know the right things to do, but many of them don't know it. So instead of you sitting there losing your life or losing the lives of people in your vehicle, step out the way for them. Let them go. 
a lot of times I see people like we're going into Montego Bay and you see people it's a two lane two lanes of traffic but people find a way to make it into three lanes of traffic my god they don't even think I remember one time we were going to the airport and I stayed in a in a um, Airbnb and we're going back to the airport and as sister Car Dawkins is driving somebody drove up on her left side mind you the left side is my side and the person drove up on her left side and then to cut in front of her to keep going into Montego Bay the life of me couldn't understand how somebody could think that is okay how can you think that's okay and so I say just be as you drive guys you'll be the defensive one you look out for them you drive for yourself and the rest of them so that you can get home safely to your family um, again so I said before stop selling license we're selling license. Yeah, the people they you know, the people who are collecting money illegally and they know that they wouldn't pass the driving test. And because they are under handed deep people in the in the department of, 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 of motor motor vehicles, yeah. They pay some money. The bigger the money paid, the bigger the license they're going to get. And they cannot manage these things on the road. And so they are a threat out there for other people right so if they promote stricter licensing requirements um make sure that there's a more thorough testing to include the practical driving test that truly assess real jamaican road navigation um that would help a whole lot then <laughs> we need good and honest people to enforce the traffic laws my god everybody can't be satisfied with what they make they go into teaching and they know in teaching the teachers are the lowest paid people and it, it's like you're getting into it but you're getting into it understanding that so you have policemen and other people get into their professions and all of a sudden they can live off it and they can this and they can that yeah, and they have to hustle right they have to hustle you can hustle with a second job you don't have to hustle with hustling away people's money from them and then to leave bad things on the road. You know it's bad. You know that they should have been ticketed. And you're not taking you're not only taking away the, the, the money from the treasury for, to help run the country, to help fix the roads, to help put lights in, in places, to help with those things. But you're also leaving people who are not fit for the road. You're leaving them out there to create a bigger, a bigger problem. So you need honest people to check for speeding, to check for the drunk driving, right? To look out for the road rages that sometimes cause gunshots to fire or machines to get pulled and people losing their lives or limbs. If you can afford money, invest some money to put up more cameras, especially since the highways are built and you know throw some cameras out there man some people it doesn't they don't need to have um a body a real body there to monitor but um the cameras can clock license plate numbers and generate tickets to and and and, and what have you you know if, if the tickets are not paid then go pick up the vehicle but put up things like those instead of having um unscrupulous people people who you know just just taking pay just collecting money to look the other way and and the country just keeps on ah uh, gets worse and worse so these tickets can be processed without road cops who keeps on shaking people down for money so nothing gets fixed and the country keeps on losing its funds another one thing that could help is that if some incentives could be offered even like for the insurance companies who have to pay out these monies why not offer some incentives and maybe they have them already i don't know i don't drive i was never excited for driving so i don't drive didn't drive in america didn't drive here have my license for many moons
but all I did was renew it for ID purposes. Never, you know, I drove, got my license the first time I went and, and, and did the road test. I passed it and I came home and that was it. I was never excited to buy a car and I could afford to buy a car. Later on, I, um, I bought my first RAV4, used RAV4, and then I brought it back in and I traded it in and bought a brand new RAV4. Never sat in the driver's seat. My son drove it. And I tell you guys the story where when my son bought his home and they were leaving my home, and he was leaving my home, and I was thinking he would have taken the truck because I don't drive it. I had somebody who picked me up for school and he would pick me up after school. But the person who dropped me off at school also, eventually I just had her dropping me off home from school. And I was just lazy. I could have walked anyways. Um, and, but when he was leaving, he says, I said, son, you can have the truck. And he says, mommy, the rav is what you like. I don't like rav fours. Don't you think the boy's getting a free vehicle? He would gladly say, thank you, mommy. Nope. So I took the vehicle in, sold it back to the to one of the dealerships. And um, in doing that, they, they paid off what was left. wasn't much, but they paid it off free and clear. But the catch to it was, my son was getting a vehicle and... Um, I had to co-sign on it for him. But he didn't just get a vehicle. We walk around in the down park, in the down area um, where the vehicles were. And I was thinking my son would take a, like a little use, something, something. Um, he used to love Honda Civic, the two-door Honda Civics. He used to love that. When my daughter bought, bought hers, he, oh my God. Before he was even finished with high school, that's what he loved. But my thing was, you know, I'm not going to buy your car. But when I bought mine, he was a driver. Now he's buying a vehicle. I'm showing him these little nice cars. And mommy, no, he's kept walking. Where did the boy walk to? To a, to a Benz. My son walked to a Benz. I had to call sign. But as I always admonish you guys, and again, that's just my POV. Um... You know, when your kids work hard, you support them. You support them. His payments on his bends was coming out of his pocket. Wasn't coming out of mine. So I supported him. And that's the taste he has. If he can maintain it, it's up to him. I'm not there maintaining it for, maintaining it for them, both of them. Um, they work hard. They pay for what they can afford. And I wish them God's blessings. But I've never driven. And, and, and even the red one, I call it my ladybug. Drove it one time to my school. Tried to park it. Tried to do this. Tried to do that. And I got home after that. And parked it. And that was it. Never sat in the driver's seat again. I'm not excited for driving. And coming home, then I had to sell it. So... That was that. But um, one of the things that people can do is to offer incentives for good, safe driving records, such as um, insurance discounts. So insurance discounts, I hope that they have something like that in place. As I said, I don't know because I don't drive, so I don't really know. I should have researched it here uh, before I mentioned it. But that can help. If you know that if I keep a clean record for the whole year, um, make sure I, may, I, I don't get a ticket, make sure I, you know, I'm doing what they ask me to do. And the insurance companies can give a few, some dollars off the insurance even for a few months. Then let's look at the maintenance of the vehicles. A lot of people, you know, your brain not working, but you're out there. You're out there in the public, on the highway, speeding, and knowing that the car has no brake, and if you're trying to stop it, if something happens in front of you, just like that, people, you, you're going to be killing off some people. And yet you get up and you, you take your chance, oh, the brake now holds so good, but I go go on and see. And you get out there knowing that you are putting people's lives in danger. Don't do that, guys. 
don't do it. You know that the car is not properly maintained. Just just keep it off the road. The, 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 the tires have to have a certain amount of pressure in it so that when you step on the brake, the, the, the wheel, the tires will hold on the road. Do your due diligence. Do the right things. And so that you don't put people's lives in danger unnecessarily. Taxi drivers, you know every day you're responsible for people. Bus drivers, you know that. Make sure things are properly maintained, man. So when you go out there, you are you are um, making sure that people are safe and secure. The, 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 the big trucks hauling things. You know, if your brake's not working, you're just going to keep sliding down somewhere. Because the load alone is going to keep pushing the vehicle forward. Please, man, just do the right thing. It's not every time you're going to get to swing off and go in bushes or something. Just do the right thing. Sometimes there's no way to swing but right into another person's vehicle. So let's do the right thing. Maintain the vehicles. Maintain them. And so that we can keep Jamaicans a little bit safer. Finally, cultivating a culture that values road safety through education to improve drivers' behaviors. A lot of drivers, they are so distressed. I don't know how this going to work. Because some little things that I hear people tell people, go do this to your mama. Oh, you do 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 do. You know some words, some words that they spit out their mouth. Because somebody might just say something simple. You can't partner someone. All of a sudden, it becomes a rage. Guys, control yourself. Sing a song. You know, say a prayer to God and keep God in your heart as you go out there. Stop making the devil take control. Stop making the devil take control. Don't say you cannot, you couldn't avoid things when you know that if you had, you if you had, just check the water in your vehicle, then you'd have known that the, 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 the something, the, 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 the thing not have enough water in the so it, it might burst you know just do the right things fill up level off your water them I mean, the, the liquids in your in your thing your oil your windscreen thing to wash the windscreen a lot of times you drive through things it's dusty whatever rain come whatever and it leaves them just have it just Make sure that you have what you need. The, the wipers are working. The, the liquid in, in the thing is working. So you can spritz a little and clean your windscreen. You have to be able to see where you're going and see clearly. Don't look and say, oh, I never see the person. Because the screen did dirty. I couldn't never even notice that somebody had come and run out in there and, and hurt people. Understand this, that death is sure. We all have to die. But untimely death, creates a lot of burden on people. Can nobody, when, when somebody can give you a plate of food every day, it's not so expensive at all. But when somebody dies unexpectedly, you have to take up this big lump sum of money to bury somebody. It's not easy. A lot of you have no insurance on your vehicles, but you're out there carrying people. You're out there creating problems. And then when problems come, when, when, when situations happen, then all of a sudden, nothing to offer these people. Nothing to offer. So guys, let's just do the right thing. This Jamaica, we're better than that, right? Let us do the right things. Let us not be so hasty. Where are we going? We ain't going anywhere. Some of you so overtaking everything in front of you, and then we drive up and you still park at the light down there, wait for you to get... Just chill. Just chill. Jamaica must be must take it easy, man. Just take it easy. Leave early so you're not late. Leave early so you don't have to be out there fighting the road and, and creating havoc for other people. Leave a little earlier. And if you're late, call somebody, tell them that you're 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 late, but you're on your way. And just take your time and follow the road. The, the laws of the road and, and just make people get back home safely. So that's the talk for today, people. Another too, too long, right? It was supposed to be a short talk, but then 
<laughs> some other things came in and became passionate about it because I know that everybody wants to be safe. Nobody wants to be, you know, we know we're not metal for just bend up and then beat out again. Those of you crossing the streets, do so with care, with caution. And as again, I said, we're not metal, we're not iron, we can beat out and come back if something hit us in a process of crossing carelessly, then it's going to be painful. So let's do the right thing, Jamaica, because we know how to do it and we know why we need to do it. So let's continue onward and upward. Now, if you can be good, be careful, but just do the right thing. Much love.